How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender medical student. And today we're going to be going over the five most expensive medications right now in the United States because medication prices without insurance are incredibly ridiculous. I mean, some go up to the hundreds, but this video specifically, I was curious to see how far pharmaceutical companies are willing to go to have people pay for their medications. And full disclosure, a lot of these medications are gene therapies, which tend to be expensive to begin with because they're newer drugs that are created. But at the same time, why are they so ridiculously expensive that people that actually need that drug to survive can't even afford it? Because at the end of the day, after I've done all my research, almost every single one of the medications that I found on the most expensive list is to treat a disease where someone may die an early death from and they probably can't afford it because the disease that they have gives them disabilities to the point where they might not be able to make that amount of money unless they have some form of privilege or heritable wealth. Medication prices is per a very personal thing to me because my sister has systemic lupus erythematosus, which is a disorder that if you're not medicated can really diminish someone's quality of life and even lead to an early death. So uh, my sister became resistant to the typical medications that's used to treat lupus a few years ago and my entire family got really concerned. She's my twin, so she's only 24 at the time. She has so many years left to live. We were getting really worried because the only drug that's ever been FDA approved to help specifically treat lupus without insurance is up to a thousand dollars a month leading up to twenty four thousand dollars a year of treatments and there was no way my family could afford that because my dad is a uber driver and my mom doesn't work we're blue collar we're a blue collar family and there was no way my sister was going to be able to afford it however Luckily, because she became resistant to most of the current medications to treat her illness, her insurance had no way to say no and approved her for this medication. So I know what it's like to be a part of a family where you have someone you love going through an illness that needs a medication that costs thousands of, and thousands of dollars. So the fifth most expensive drug right now in the United States is a gene therapy called Luxterna. L-U-X-T-U-R-N-A, and it's priced at $850,000 a year for a one-year treatment. I don't understand why it's that expensive, but it is used to treat retinal dystrophy, which is an eye disorder that can lead to blindness, and retinitis pigmentosa is the most common form of retinal dystrophy that exists. A lot of people have retinitis pigmentosa. Actually, there's a famous YouTuber that talks about living with uh, blindness and living with retinitis pigmentosa. Her name is Molly Burke. If you haven't checked out her videos, you absolutely should. She really talks about both the mental toll, physical toll, and what it's like living with the illness. And this is what the retina looks like with retinitis pigmentosa. So if someone is able to afford Luxterna, it can greatly at least help slow down the progression of blindness and somewhat treat the disorder and somewhat improve the quality of life for the patient so that's why it makes me so mad that pharmaceutical companies are pricing these up because who can afford eight hundred fifty thousand dollars a year for treating their blindness the next most expensive drug in the united states is something called myelept myelept what it does is it helps treat a disorder called lipodystrophy the root word lipo means fat and dystrophy means something that's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. So lipodystrophy is a disorder where someone who has abnormal fat distribution in their body. So generally, for most people, when we gain fat, the fat is distributed on our external, right under the skin. So like right here in our arms, in our stomach, in our thighs, that's what creates our curves if we are curvy, uh, but with lipodystrophy, the fat accumulates, as, accumulates 
But with lipodystrophy, the fat accumulates in places where it shouldn't be really accumulating, such as the liver, causing things like fatty liver. And if fatty liver sounds like a bad term, it is a bad term. Nobody wants a fatty liver. Other people can get fatty liver, especially people who drink a lot of alcohol because the liver is the most important organ that we have to help metabolize toxins. So if we have a fatty liver, there's a lot of fat in the liver, the liver cells can't do what it wants to do optimally, so eventually the liver does start shutting down. So this drug, Myelept, can really help with redistributing that fat to where it needs to be for these patients, and it's priced at $890,000 a year. The third most expensive drug in the United States is something called Danielza, and it's priced at $977,000 a year, almost a million dollars for the treatment. And it's supposed to help treat a childhood cancer called neuroblastoma. Neuroblastoma is somewhat common among the childhood cancers, but the good thing about Danielza is that not everyone with neuroblastoma will need it to help with treating neuroblastoma. There's a lot more cheaper options for the treatment of neuroblastoma. And out of all the childhood cancers, it has a really good five-year survival rate. It's at 85% with current medications and surgical interventions that we have. So Danielza, uh, although very, very, very expensive, is not first line for the treatment of neuroblastoma. And luckily, families that have children with this cancer can find much, much more affordable options to help treat their child and not rely on this ridiculous, ridiculously expensive drug. The second most expensive drug in the United States is a drug called Zokinvi or Zokinvi. I don't really know how to pronounce this one, but Zokinvi is about $1,032,000 a year for treatment. And what makes me even more mad is that it is the only FDA approved drug to treat hutchinson guilford progeria syndrome i know that's a that's a tongue twister out there but hutchinson guilford progeria syndrome is a very very difficult diagnosis for people that have this condition what it does is that it um it breaks apart this protein in our bodies called lamin a and lamin a is used to create the structure of the nucleus in our cells if you've taken some form of Biology in elementary school, middle school, high school, you'll know the nucleus is the center of the cell, the brain of the cell. It does whatever it is so that our cells work and collectively our bodies work and our mouths move. So when you don't have that structure of protein for the nucleus, the nucleus breaks down easily. Our cells break down super quickly. So these people are known to be people that age very, very quickly. I mean, the life expectancy of hutchinson guilford progeria syndrome is from 15 to 25 years old because they age that quickly. And unfortunately, most people do not survive past the age of 25. There's a va very famous person, his name is Sam Burns. He had hutchinson guilford progeria syndrome. He made an excellent, beautiful TED Talk about what it means to have this illness, but also what it means to celebrate and appreciate life with the limited numbers that you have. It's very emotional, made me cry a couple of times when I first watched it, but he has been the face of trying to get treatments for this illness a lot. There's, It's a rare condition, but people do have it, and these people deserve to have an average human lifespan just as much as anyone else. And the fact that Zokinvi is one million dollars a year. I, I I just don't know what to say. And lastly, and perhaps the most ridiculous drug and most expensive drug in the United States is a drug called Zolgensma. Zolgensma is priced at, and I kid you not, two million one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year it's almost double the price of zokinvi which is around one million dollars a year so two million dollars a year for the treatment of a condition called spinal muscular atrophy spinal muscular atrophy is a genetic condition where someone who's born with it eventually loses 
their motor neurons and motor neurons are the neurons nerve cells that allow us to move our skeletal muscles so these people experience muscular wasting they definitely become wheelchair bound at a certain age and have to rely on a wheelchair with robotic functions to get along with their day-to-day -day activities there's a famous youtuber he's getting huge along with his wife i'm super proud of them squirmy and grubs who document Shane's spinal muscular atrophy and document their life living with um, spinal muscular atrophy and his wife talks about what it means to be a caregiver for someone that you love and live in life to the fullest and luckily there's other treatments for spinal muscular atrophy but they're still still very expensive I remember Shane made a video about him taking something called Spinraza which is also another very expensive drug, but it helps with the quality of life with people with spinal muscular atrophy. And the fact that Zolgensma is the most expensive at $2 million a year, it's insane because, because of these prices, the large majority of the people that I've talked about suffering from these illnesses will never have the opportunity for a better quality of life because they can't afford this medication. So morale of the story of the end of this video is that know that pharmaceutical companies are evil. They don't even let doctors be able to give the drugs that they want for their patients. I've had so many doctors I've worked with in the last year where they want to give this patient this drug to help them out, but insurance keeps saying no. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something by watching the content that I produce. I hope you gained something. I hope you will share it with someone who might find this content informational or entertaining. Follow me on Instagram to keep up with my daily life and Twitter to keep up with my shenanigans. And I'll see you on the next video. Mwah. This is Ben.